Hey everyone, this is Austin Schur here with We Write About Music, and today I'm speaking with Chris Kincaid of Else Waves. The band has just shared an all-new single titled Smiling Through, and I'm super excited to have him on. Chris, I want to sincerely thank you so much for coming on today. How are you doing? Thank you, Austin. It's a pleasure to speak with you. The pleasure is mine. I get to talk to someone about their cool music. It's a great day in my book. <laughs> I want to... Oh, I'm to talk about music. Yeah, let's just do it. Let's just hop right into it. Um, Smiling Through is just like this classic rock thriller that just pulls from literal decades of sound and even like into the modern future of rock and roll, I think. I have a million questions to ask you, but the first thing I really want to know is what is it all about? Like, what does this song in particular mean to you? Interesting, because um... Smiling through, like if you see the video, it kind of became sort of a message thing. It's sort of like a a, a, a tribute and an acknowledgement of um, women in the world, and acknowledgement and a love. And 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 it, when it was conceived originally, the way Rick and I, uh, my guitar player Rick Knotts, amazing guitar player, when we record, uh, we've known each other for fifty years, and we go into a place. Where We'll rent a house up in uh, Lake Arrowhead or up in the Pacific Northwest, and we'll just bring our stuff and have no idea, because he lives up there, I live down here in Los Angeles, and he'll just start strumming something, I'll just start singing, we'll press record. So unconsciously, we create these songs in a way that w eventually we figure out what they're about. There's no, well, hey, let's write this about this, but they just sort of evolve, and it's very spontaneous, and uh, our creative process has always been, you know, Rick goes and I go, okay, press record. And I just start making up words and stuff like that. So that's kind of, this is another one, how it evolved, it evolved this way as well. This okay. particular song we recorded up in Santa Barbara. It was our last day of recording. We did five days of recording in what was basically a haunted house on the Riviera. Uh, and I tell you stories about that, but sure. uh, we packed everything up and we were done. And about four in the morning, Rick goes, you know, I want to add a diff, I want to add the solo to this now. And so we unpacked everything, put it all together, and I sat back and watched Rick just do this blistering solo at four in the morning and just on one take, and we go, wow, that's magical. The same the solo can... that's featured in the song? Yes. Yeah, we packed up. He was going to have the crazy. solo later up in Seattle. And he said, I want to do it now. So we unpacked everything at three or four in the morning, and we've been pr pr playing for five days, we recorded like 10 different songs. And I want to do the solo now. So he gets the guitar out. And I just sat back and I'm like, going, I am being treated to just an amazing experience right. here. Watch Rick do world. this. And that's how that all very spontaneous. You put a guitar in Rick's hands and just, just put on the switch and sit back and just watch what happens because the boy can play. I mean, nothing better than a front row C, am I right? <laughs> that's I the best way to go about it. Believe it. Yeah, that's one of that's the best awesome. things about it. So is I it get just to... you two? It's just you two? In, I mean, Rick I... and I are the, the core members of Else Waves. Um, uh, we do bring on guest artists. For example, Lynn Sorensen. He's kind of the third wave. Uh, so, he's our bass player, our violin player, our viola player. He also mixes and masters our songs. And uh, Lynn is a, is a Pacific Northwest legend musician. Cool. And to be able to work with him is something else. Uh, Doug McGrew appears on drum, another amazing Seattle musician, uh, just fantastic job. Sometimes we bring in Michael DeRozier, Rock and Roll Hall of Famer for the band Heart. He appears on our songs, uh, right. Waves Kissing Sand, and all the songs on our first album. And uh, so we've got great players, you know, I mean, I have to pinch myself that I get to work with these guys. I mean, for real. So like, how long has Else Waves been a, like an official thing? It sounds like you guys have been playing for a little bit now. Obviously, you've known each other for what seems like ever. Yeah. Well, I was I was in a band with Rick uh, in high school and out of high school called Rail and Company. It was a big band up in the Pacific Northwest. I left that band uh, when I was like 19 years old and went down to uh, Texas and then the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. Rick stayed on with the band. They became Rail. They got some traction. They toured with Van Halen and stuff like that. But we'd always stayed in touch. And about 30 years ago, he started coming down here to the NAM convention because he created this guitar sustainer. He invented this thing and he was marking it down there. So we'd get together every year and we'd, you know, old friends, we'd make some music and blah, blah, blah. And, and but it was just fun. And then one day, I think it was 2010, I broke out one of my harps. 
And I said, can I play with you, Rick, and just create a sound? He said, okay. So we did this 11 minute piece. We looked at each other and we went, wow, we're kind of creating a new musical language. So <laughs> yeah. we, uh, we created Elsewave at that moment. We invested our money and we started going up to uh, our first recording session was up at Lake Arrowhead. We went up there for five days and we got like 18 songs to just flowed. Um, there's rockers, there's eclectic stuff. There's a civil war thing we did with mandolins. There's all kinds of different things. But at the core of it, Rick is a rock and roll guitar player, but he's so much more than that. He's the consummate musician, can play anything. And he's pretty much my musical soulmate. So Elsewave is officially formed after knowing each other for like 35 years or so on that day when I broke out one of my harps and said, can I play with you? <laughs> <laughs> well, damn, I mean, if not this time, then definitely next time I got to bring Rick on to help talk about all of this because it's just- Yeah, I wish awesome. he would have been available today. In fact, I just got off the phone with him. He was on a lunch break and I told him I was doing this and he said to say hello. And he's a, he's a fascinating guy. Anybody- Shout who, out to Rick. <laughs> Yeah, anyone who's up in the Seattle area knows Rick Knotts. He's he's right. very well known for his work with Rail and other different bands he's been in. But uh, Elsewaves is his heart and soul because that's uh, that's the music that he makes. Very cool. And I've also got to mention the two harps because, I mean, not only are harps pretty rare nowadays in music as a whole, or to see one, but to have two in the background, I think I feel like I've seen it all of this. Yeah, I've got three actually. There's a <laughs> Makushla here. This is Louise, and the big better. blue one is Lulu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lulu is an electric harp, okay? An electric uh, okay. harp that plugs into a guitar stomp box and amplifiers, and I can do anything with that one. These are more traditional, sure, uh, sure. but that is a, a, that's a rock and roll machine there. I can do Jimi Hendrix's Star Spangled Banner on that in full scream. That is so, badass. You know, that is badass. I've always, I, basically, I wanted to be, I, I love harp music i've been playing sure, for a long sure. time but i really wanted to be stevie ray vaughn of the harp so i'm not sure how that's worked yeah, out but uh, that was my goal with the electric harp it doesn't matter how young you are how old you are there's always a path to greatness if you're talented in any instrument it doesn't matter it does not matter well it's also a matter of just satisfying yourself and you know um so for me yeah, for me, success is living a creative life and surrounding yourself with creative people. Absolutely. You know, uh, a good friend of mine told me that years ago, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's absolutely right. And so that's what we do. You know, it's totally. tough to make any money in music these days, so you do it because it's something you have to do. Totally. And you and I, so you'd mentioned before we started recording, you had put out four songs as of very recently. This is just one of them. Yeah. Is there a yeah, reason yeah. why you're kind of like front loading the year with new singles and not sporadically putting them out? Or on the other hand, we, do you have other things coming out for the rest of this year? Yeah, well, actually, we, we released our first album in 2012. And then there was a long gap where we didn't release stuff. We were just recording. We were recording up uh, in, in Joshua Tree, La Connor up in Pacific Northwest, and just woodshedding songs. But because of our day jobs and stuff we do, it was hard to, you know, we're, of a, we're from that era where you release an album. And I realized, no, you don't have to release an album, release singles. I mean, so nowadays, we, uh, yeah. Start yeah, no one listens to this album. So we released Smiling Through in May. Sure. We released Overcome By You in August. We uh, released Unbound no, uh, Unbound in August, uh, Overcome By You in October, and Waves Kissing Sand, our eight and a half minute instrumental, we released uh, uh, two Fridays ago. So, okay. and we have more coming up. In fact, we've got something to be coming out in April. We got, we got songs, we've been woodshedding. We're just putting them into production now and just plugging them in, seeing if anybody likes them. I am personally invested to listen at this point because I love your guys' sound. It actually you also, it, it begs the question, are you guys going to be looking to experiment? Like in the future, I know, you know, you've kind of got this eclectic sound, obviously it's rock based, but with so many different instruments going on and so much influence over the years, like, do you have fun switching it up or like, how does it work? like in a creative process on these things? Well, again, everything is, is very stream of consciousness. Uh, our latest song that we released, Waves Kissing Sand, we recorded up at Whidbey Island. Uh, I had this harp riff. I was basically trying to do like a Robin Trower, Bridge of Size type of thing on the harp. And Rick and I had gone out to dinner and, and I said, I'm gonna play this harp riff here. And Rick just started playing and he played this eight and a half minute monster emotional solo. And we built the song around that. Just how it happened we're very spontaneous we don't plan a lot 
we just kind of create, you know, we're very, uh, I, I know I myself am so right brain that I'm almost handicapped, you know, and uh, <laughs> sure, so sure. I live in that world of yeah. creating and, and figuring things out and making myself happy. But yeah, so there's lots of experimental stuff. Our, our first album had a whole bunch of different things. We had instrumentals on it. I did a Renaissance piece on the harp with viola for a guitar solo. I mean, we do all kinds of experimental things. Smiling Through is more straight ahead. Hey, we know how to do this rock and roll type thing. And, and when we made the video, it wound up being something, you know, that we're really passionate about and, uh, you know, giving an ode to the women in the world saying, we recognize you, we hear you, we love you. And that's kind of how that evolved to that point. It'll be interesting to see how these upcoming songs that we're working on now and the finishing touches and production, the video, what they will become. Because right now, we're not really sure, but we know we're heading in a direction where they will present themselves and evolve in a way that we feel comfortable sharing. I love it. The, the fact that you just kind of get in there with no plan and riff it out and figure it out. I personally don't make music. I'm a very amateur musician who just likes to play by himself, basically. But it's the kind of way I envision myself making music at that time, too. Going in without a, a particular plan, I feel like it gives you so much more space to to have more fun ultimately and not feel like it's a job rather you're just enjoying yourself generally ultimately austin it's a, a wonderful way to make yourself happy yeah, yeah. we're all looking uh, for ways to make ourselves happy the world is nuts yeah i, mean, I don't see it I mean, getting less the, nuts <laughs> the countless hours i've spent just playing these I, like i wrote six new songs on the harp in the last week that only i have heard uh, and they just appear and they're really fun. And, um, you know, you, you please yourself, you know, when you make music and if someone else likes it, that's great. You put it out there, you can be kind of vulnerable because some people can have their ideas and be pretty hostile. But when someone embraces it and, and gives you kindness and shows it, you know, we recognize you're creating something out of love and, and we're going to be generous with our feelings because we recognize that, that makes it all worthwhile. It's what it's all about, man. It's all about having fun. Music and just art in general is one of those things that I feel like yeah. you should never take it too seriously. There's never really that much on the line. It's just about fulfilling. Yeah. Um, yeah. When it, when, it, when it does and when you do, you sometimes lose that spark. Absolutely. Yeah, that's the main thing. Um, there is actually so, sort of related to that. There's one thing I want to know is, you know, you've been doing this for a while. You've been making music and you've gone through the entire process of like the recording to the producing to like, I mean, you've seen it from start to finish. Is there something in particular that you get excited about the most when embarking on a new song? Um, yeah, just just finding that, that, that sense of discovery where it's gonna take us. Again, you know, everything we do is channeled. The very first song we did in this project, um, we decided, you know, we're going to invest in this and Rick invested in, in recording equipment and, and he was practicing being an engineer and learning about that. We rented this beautiful house up at Lake Arrowhead and we loaded all our stuff up there. We're going to be there for five days and we're going to start recording the next day. And Rick goes, I want to play. Some, I want to record something now. I go, well, uh, OK, OK. So he whips out a mandolin. Right. And he plays this three part suite on mandolin. Uh -huh. And I start, OK, I'll play it again. And he played it again, I start muttering some words, and then I go, okay, play it again and press record. And we recorded yeah. this song called Reckless Splendor live, three-part okay. suite. I'm making up the words, Rick is playing this beautiful uh, thing, and we conclude it's one of the most beautiful things we've ever done. And it was just, let's just, uh, just chant. I'm one of these people that can just <laughs> chant the words and stuff. And, and so that's kind of our process. And we enjoy that a lot. We enjoy the spark of creativity, the muse sort of uh, informing us as to where we're going to go. And we just sort of step aside and get in the car and take that ride. And Absolutely. it's a lot of fun. To, that trust to be able to trust that, you know, Absolutely. I don't care. At one point we said, we don't care if anybody even hears these songs. You right. know, we made them for us. We were thinking about not even releasing them because we were like, you know, what's the point? You know, we get them, maybe no one else would. And then I said, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. And so we started the process of, uh, after our first album, letting these new songs out and they're starting to gain momentum. We're starting to get wonderful people like you that are going, hey, I hear you. And we're going, wow, this is pretty cool. We're like kids again. It's the best, man. It's the best. Like, I mean, I, all the time, you know, I send music that comes in to my friends and my family and I pick out certain things and make individual playlists. And it's just like, I know my parents based on the music that they, you know, showed me when I grew up, would eat this up in a second. And you can just feel the passion and love that comes through and it's so easily. There's such like a, 
like a genuineness that just flows through in the sound. You can feel you guys having fun. Like it's not. Thank you. I'm so, glad, I'm so glad it's just like BS. Yeah, production I'm so glad that we're getting it. Totally, man. Yeah, so are, you guys, are you guys playing shows at all? Is that a thing that you want to do? No, we'd love to, but I live down here and he lives up there. That's true. So, That's true. you know, in a perfect world, you know, we'd be able to play some shows because we'd love to. And Rick is a dynamic live performer. Sure. I mean, he's one of those good players you watch and you, your jaw just drops and going, I'm seeing greatness there, you know, so it'd be great, but I'm not sure that's ever going to happen because of the, you know, just the logistics, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, his job is up there and I, my job keeps you down here, you know. Well, Super if it even happens once, me. if it happens once, yeah, let me know. It, it happens in here, you know, when it comes down here, we're gonna make, someday we'll do a live thing where we're playing the, I mean, live yeah. and just play it. We're all about live streams these days and we're all about, you yeah. know, YouTube and just videos and this and that. It's just like set up a camera in the corner and see, it might be a little bit, a little pressure, you know what I mean? Like it might not flow as organically, but who knows? It'd be really fun. Our last, we were going to, I was going to go up to Seattle in August to shoot a video for our song Overcome by You. And we're going to start, we're going to have the whole band playing live. We'd have people interacting, getting on stage and everyone filming it. And I was going to take everyone's films of filming it and create the video for that. But then the current wave of uh, the pandemic yeah, kind of yeah, kept yeah. that from happening. So I had to piece together a video from old clips of dance stuff and all. It turned out really fun, but it wasn't our original idea. I was looking forward to getting up there and actually being with the guys and, you know, performing live. That would have been fun. Totally. Um, I've got a couple more for you. Basically, what I want to know is, you know, we're recording this basically at the top of the year right now. What are some goals, if you have set any, for the band by the end of 2022? Well, we have right now probably about 16 unreleased songs okay. in various stages of production. In the and we're them on one by one and releasing them. Um, we're going to have hand over the files to Lynn Sorensen, our, our wonderful friend and bass player who does a great job of mixing and engineering. And he's a dynamic performer. And, He'll put them together and, and then I'll sit here and create the video with my zero dollar budget, which is what <laughs> I usually have, and just put something together. Uh, so we'll get those out. We have, um, there's a, a movie that I, I co-produced and, and it's going to be released on March 22nd called Dreaming Hollywood. And we got a couple cuts in there. And uh, so, you know, I, I without dropping names i i kind of know everyone in this town because I'm i work sure. on them yeah and i never i never crossed the line of saying hey can you do this for me but i got That's enough tough. people now in the, in the industry here listening to our stuff that i'm hoping to get some placement on uh some songs uh, uh some films commercials who knows Absolutely. what we're just throwing it out there and seeing what happens and and uh you know maybe we'll make enough to pay for our our little habit of doing this. Do it, man. Don't try to make any more than that. You but, could even you know, break but, even. That's all that matters. Just that would be anything. Um, it's an expense. <laughs> yeah, that's for damn sure. Um, okay, I've got one more question for you. Basically, the mm -hmm. question is for the person that is going to discover you guys from this, and for the person that is going to listen to your music for the first time. What is an opening message that you'd like to say to them? An opening message. Um, um, I would probably say, cast aside any preconceptions and listen with an open mind and an open heart, and um, you know, just try to just try to experience it. You know, and and if you get it, fine. If you don't, that's fine too. You know, but those that get it will get it because there's a little little grain of magic and substance in what we create. We try not to be over we try not to to write songs to please people we write and create songs to please ourselves sure. and we feel we have a pretty high standard of what that entails and that if people uh can appreciate that and again set aside preconceptions and stereotypes and things like that or well, i don't like this song because it's a rock song i don't like rock and all yeah yeah just just you know our instrumental we just released just really blew people's minds because it breaks all kinds of genres and it's okay. eight and a half minutes and it's kind of a cosmic ambient rock track and um uh it's interesting to see how that has challenged people in the listening process to either go on board or, and a lot of people are getting it we're receiving these great responses and i've been sharing them with rick and we're like okay you know this is you know uncompromised you know i mean we we, we don't have any 
illusions based on our demographic, our age demographic, and, and uh, our background that we're going to be big stars. But if there's a handful of people out there that dig our music and can appreciate what we've done, we feel good about that. You know, even oh, yeah. if nobody does, we still feel good about it because we like it. You know, I've had a couple of people write, hey, you should do this with your song. And I said, you, know, you don't get it. You know, yeah. if, if you like the song, let us know. That's great. If you don't politely say you don't, we don't really we're not really interested in your review of how we can change things, because that's that's a waste of time. We, we've done it. We're doing it. And if you don't get it, just just politely say we don't get it or we don't like it. But if you like it, let us know, because that's what we want to hear. Please. <laughs> I mean, there's just not enough bands and independent artists out there getting the positive feedback. Most of it is yes. negative comments like, well, that sucked. I don't want like, no, I need mean, to put the positive out there. So. Oh, yeah, there's 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 been some that I've literally gone, ah, you know, OK, just brush it off. But then, you know, you read the the, the people that get it and appreciate it and go, OK, I'm good. You know, I, I, I know not everyone's going to like everything. I don't even like everything, oh, you know, but as, a, as, a, as an artist, though, I appreciate the, the effort that people make in creating their art. I appreciate it. And I'm usually very, very aware of that. Even if I'm not wild about it, I realize, hey, this is something someone's passionate about. They took the time to learn. They took the time to create it. And it means something to them. You know, so there's a certain empathic response I can have, even if it's not something that generates excitement for me. And I've noticed that a lot of folks that I'm uh, experiencing with having sent this out seem to be aware of that. And even the folks that say, hey, this isn't right for a place, whatever, have said some lovely things. And it's, it's just nice to share uh, creativity with people. It's nice to share music. It's nice to share art. Um, you know, we're, we're in, a, in a world right now that's very polarized and all. And if we can find some communal response of goodwill and um, uh, compassion and friendship for people we haven't even met. I think that creates an environment where, you know, there's hope for the human race just on that one level. You're doing oh, something yeah, where your people yeah. go, well, this is, this is, you know, hey, you know, I may not agree with you on this, whatever, but yeah, creatively, yeah, that, that, I felt that and I thank you. And so, you know, we, we love that, you know, Absolutely. every artist loves that. You don't, um, you don't want to make music art in a vacuum. It's nice to put it out there, but there's a vulnerability about doing that that sometimes, can make you feel like, why did I let that guy say that? You know, and he goes, just brush it off, yeah. move on to the next. Yeah, don't don't absorb it. It's okay. a big world, and there's lots of lots of options out there, and lots of people. Chris, this has been a fantastic talk. I sincerely, again, I want to thank you so much for your time. I'm so happy that thank we can make you this work. So and I want to just plug thank you guys one more time. The band is called Else Waves. The song is called Smiling Through. Listen to it, stream it, follow along, send it to all your friends song absolutely rips. Check out our website, yeah. www.elsewaves.com. E-L-S-E-W-A-V-E-S.com. Everything, everything will be linked so everyone can find everything. Um, oh, fantastic. Yeah, but seriously, again, thank you so much. I hope we run into each other at some point in yeah. the great big Los Angeles. Um, and we'll definitely yeah. be speaking soon. Thank you so yeah, much. And check out Wave Kissing Sand, our new one. I, I think will, really I will. Like um, yeah, yeah, man. Here's Have your glasses. Sometime, let's go get lunch. Let's do it, man. Let's do it. Uh, Thank you. All. Yeah, man. Thank you again. Have a great rest of your day. We'll talk soon. My pleasure. Bye Thank bye. you.